For a few days, we've been at Munising Tourist Park Campground in Munising, Michigan. It's right on Lake Superior, and if you get one of the lucky sites, you're right on the beach overlooking the water. Your campfire's right there. It's the perfect view you've ever seen. But before we get to Munising Tourist Park Campground, we first have to cross the Mackinac Bridge. Kevin is terrified of bridges, and this one didn't help at all. This is the point that Kevin's been dreading. This, we're going over the Mackinac Bridge. And the steel deck part oh, of it. He hates the steel deck on top of it. Um, this bridge is five miles long. Uh, cars are supposed to be going over at 45 miles an hour. Trucks are supposed to be only going 20 miles an hour. Oh, and then they're closing the left lane. Oh, no. And there's also a... Uh, well, why are we stopping? Lane closure. Oh, you know, it's okay, Kevin. It's okay. Calm down. There's a storm over Mackinac today. Tell, you can see the Grand Hotel from here. It's pretty amazing. of our truck and trailer we're gonna to have to pay eight dollars to cross this bridge and maybe that's why they're stopping Kevin is because they have to pay the toll. Easy pass is not accepted on this bridge. We found that out beforehand. No stopping on bridge. Okay. No problem. Get me over as fast as possible. $8. Thank you. And barely over the bridge and already seeing signs for pasties. After we crossed, we pulled into a turnoff so that we could get a side view of this awesome bridge. All right, we are on site 10. You can see Lake Superior in the background. You can also see that we have water and 30 amp electric hookups on this site. It's pretty spacious and wide. Got our truck on it here and camper. Let me walk around the front here so you can see it. So there's the next camper. So it's a pretty big site. Um, it's got some pretty awesome perks, which is, you know, you can see right there. Fire pit is right on the beach, right on the dune. So we had watched the sunsets while we're having our campfire at night. Um, there is a path at the back of our site that walks right down onto the beach. Makes a nice easy access. As you can see, it's been raining a lot here this trip, so um, we've managed to be, we've been really lucky. We got our pictured rocks tour in before it started raining. Um, it just stopped raining, so now we're going to Kitch Itty Kippy. Here's site 13, same thing, picnic table, fire pit, beach access, and lake views. Also a very spacious looking site because that's the next one there. This is site 35, it's gravel and flat, picnic table, fire pit, and across from the water and next to the bathhouse. Here's site 26, which is kind of at a 90 degree angle to the campsite behind it. Um, I don't know if we like that, but again, within walking distance of the bathhouse. All right, this is site 91, right on the beach. Same with the picnic table and fire pit, although it is a little bit narrower than our site. This is site 93. And ooh, look at that tree on the back of that. That's, I love that. Um, exposed roots like that. It makes such a natural looking art piece. But as you can see, water, electric, fire pit, beach access, great views. Here's site 94, again, 
Not a bad view from these, that's for sure. Here's site 98. This is site 100. Water, electric, picnic table, fire pit, beach access. I just stepped in a big old puddle. This is site one. It's really long. Um, it does look like it still has beach access at the back and it's got a little bit of shade and privacy in between sites. This is site three. It's pretty spacious. This is site 13, which is right next to the beach access. Not ideal in my opinion, but it's got a fire pit, picnic table, uh, water, and electric. So in case you're wondering, you're not staying on a beachfront site. Here is the public access. I don't know if it's public because it's campground and members only, but you can get down to the beach. When I say it's been raining, it's been raining. As you can see here, they've got a pump, pump in the water. Looks like back into Lake Superior. These are J and K, which look to be buddy sites. Kind of small. I would think either a small uh, pop-up or, or tent. Um, you see the fire pit? I do not see water or electricity. Here's site 61. It's got a little bit more tree cover than most. Um, doesn't have water or electricity. There is a small parking area at the end of the loop. And you could probably see the water from this site. <sighs> it's been so rainy and wet and now foggy and cold but we're doing our very absolute best to get footage for you guys i ran out this morning and got a few sites while um, the turnover between the turnover so that you can see a couple of waterfront sites um, but they're filled up again and the we left to go do some in the rain and when we came back this place is packed again yeah and it's a thursday it's kind of weird for turnover on a thursday like this yeah but what well, it's happened so, I don't know, they always seem to be really full. We've been here since Tuesday. Uh, we leave tomorrow morning on a Friday. So, uh, we're hoping that nobody else will, so the dump station will be empty. Got a single dump station, potable water, right next to a bathhouse. There's Wi-Fi. And the park office. There's a small camp store and firewood for sale. We got picnic tables at the bathhouse with checkerboards on the top so that you can play games, stay out of the rain, and be right near the facilities. Right next door is dump station and recycling. Here's the showers and bathhouse. There's two regular stalls and a handicapped stall. Plus you got two showers and four sinks. I have extra trailer parking up front. We've seen a lot of these dune buggy things out mud. Yeah. Even seen them out on the trails. It's right next to this really tiny playground. It says this play area has been designated for children 2 to 12. Adult supervision is recommended. I've only seen maybe one or two kids. So we leave tomorrow. Next stop is? Osler Lake in Canada. I forget, it's about a seven hour drive from here. It's not, it's, good. it's our longest leg of this journey. And so I think we're gonna get up early, pack up, head out so we can get there at a decent time, pack a lunch so we don't have to stop for lunch. Yep. Definitely gonna have to stop for gas because it's more than 300 and whatever miles away, so. Oh. And then from there, we only have another three hour drive to home. home. But it's been an awesome trip. If you guys get a chance to come up north, the Upper Peninsula, do it. It's worth every minute. But also know that even in July, bring jeans, long sleeve shirts, oh, yeah. maybe a light jacket because it does get cool. It is, what, July 20th right now. And it's got to be 62 and the breeze coming off the, the lake, lake is sharp. A little chilly. <laughs> 
Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Like all of them, guys, we can't thank you enough for everything that you do. L like this video. Please uh, subscribe. Click the bell. Give us a thumbs up. Comment. Have you been to these places? Did we miss anything? I'm sure we did. <laughs> oh, we sure we did because we were not able to hit Mackinac Island right. or Toquamanon Falls. Right. And that because it was a little bit more of a drive than we were willing to do in the three day, three yeah. nights that we were here. We packed a lot in. We but, really did. But, but it was worth it. Like I said, worth all of it. And some things got missed. Yeah. Until next time, though. Next time. Happy camping.